All right, everybody. Uh, so here we are with the first set of training scenarios from The Greatest Day, Utah. So this is training scenario two. Uh, learning scenario two, which is basically learning scenario one with an extra unit or two. It's called the Battle for the Batteries, and this covers the E-Company Assault on Braycourt Manor. So, um, let's get started. Um, presumably, maybe that's fair, maybe that's not. You know a little bit about GTS, but just in case you don't, we'll cover some of the basics here. We'll get that out of the way now, so when I do later videos, I don't have to. Um, so let's zoom in. All right, this is where most of the action will take place. I'll zoom out if I, as I have to. So to win this scenario, the Americans must eliminate this artillery park, eliminate this artillery park, and then get four steps worth of units from 4th Division, which is just out of frame here, to this hex. How do the Germans win? By preventing the Allies from realizing their objective. There are no formation chits, uh, only division chits and direct activation chits. Which means that to move into a fire zone, we have to do a second action to do it. Alright, so let's get started. So, by a scenario special rule, the first chit played is the 101st Airborne Division chit. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to roll for command points. Their command rating is a, uh, what was that, 3. So we roll the die, and we get three, so rounded down is one, so we get four, which is not great, because basically everything we're going to want to do is going to be by division activation. Alright, so we're going to activate three units. First one, we're going to fire at this artillery park here, which means that this artillery park, artillery park B, Holdy, automatically disbands. So the contact marker from the leader, which is in this hex, gets dropped, basically. All right, now we've spent our one command point to do a fire action. And this is a village hex, which is minus one. The artillery piece is plus one. So basically, we're going to be rolling a straight three if we do a fire action, or we can try and pass a bravery check, see if we can do an assault. And I think that's what we'll do. We'll try a bravery check. All right. And our base bravery is six. Let's see if we can zoom in. C company over there. Our base bravery is 6, minus 1 it comes up to 7, their defense is plus 1, 8, the village is minus 1, so 7, so 7 or less passes, a 4 is an easy pass. So first, this unit will get an opportunity to opportunity fire, so they need to pass a 3 or less. They got a 1, so they'll opportunity fire, and we'll just roll the dice. Uh, they got a 6, so it's going to be no effect. All right, so we're gonna do an assault. Now, the assault chart in the Grand Tactical uh, Summary page is this huge diagram here. Um, it's actually really easy to use. So don't worry too much about it. Uh, in a subsequent video, I might show you a closer look at that. I just want to kind of get the basics of the gameplay here. So basically, first, we make a decision. <clears throat> As the attacker, um, well, the defender has the option to run, uh, but they are not going to run um, because they can't. They have no movement value. Okay, 
So they can't run, so the attackers will do a round of Assault Fire. So first, uh, when we do Assault Fire, um, the defender will fire twice with the Assault value, uh, if the Assault value is red. So they're not going to, because they're getting charged by paratroopers, they're going to be using their sidearms, they're not going to be able to use the artillery piece. All right? So, Luthers and Rugers, here we go. Uh, red zero, we roll it twice. I got a nine and a six. Uh, the only thing that was really going to ever have a chance of hitting is a red zero. So now the paratroopers will fire with a red three and they get a two. Uh, that is a suppression test. Um, we can pay a point to pass. Um, but we only have one command point, uh, so we're going to save it. So we're going to roll, and we get an 8. So these guys are suppressed. Alright, and now we do the assault rating, which is red 4. I got a 9. So now we can do a second round of combat, or we can charge. If we charge, we're going to force the Germans to spend their one and only command point on uh, ensuring that that unit stays alive. Um, so, do we want to do that? Uh, I say yes we do. Um, so the Germans will spend their single command point. If we get lucky, we'll be able to go again before the Germans can go. We'll pull the Allied Direct Command chip. So, if that happens, that works out for us. So, the Germans get uh, defensive fire. Since they're suppressed, the only thing they can do is make a single red zero roll. And they got a two. So, this unit is finished. So, we'll come up here. And I will just pick up ever so gently. Okay. We have three command points remaining for the 101st. We're just going to move adjacent. So to move into a fire zone is automatically a second action. So that'll spend a command point. That artillery unit has identical values as the one we were just looking at. They'll get an opportunity fire. So let's roll for opportunity fire. Uh, they got an eight. So they're not going to get an opportunity fire. So they are all snuggled up next to them. Uh, which means it's going to be the end of their action. Okay. Now, what else? Uh, this rear guard... Um, technically... I should have already decided this, but since this is the first activation, uh, we're going to put these guys into column. I'm just clipping a column marker really quickly. So that's one movement point, half, two. Now we're going to say that we started them at setup in, co in uh, column. So now we can just remove this on the same time. So if the Germans want to... And these rear guards can move, unlike some other titles. Um, and some of the rear guards can't move, but the paratroopers can move. So we're going to have them hold this position until elements of the 4th, which are up here clearing some mines, can push through. Okay. So not bad, we got a single suppression out. There are some weapon nests over here and rear guards, but they really don't play a part in this scenario other than to funnel these units this way. Alright. So, let's see what we get in the cup here. Uh, and that is the Germans. So, no luck for the allies. Uh, okay, so we're going to roll. 
and we're going to get 3 plus their command rating of 4, we're going to get 7 command points, which is a lot. Alright, so, um, suppressions can be rallied in fire zones while in command, so we'll take that suppression off, that's a single command point. We have this artillery unit here. We'll spend another command point. Uh, actually, that, oh, actually, these are, uh, excuse me. Um, I guess we can do this. This is a division. I'm sorry, I'm getting confused. Um, we'll do a direct fire here. All right, we got a nine. Uh, so that doesn't do anything. So we've spent two of our command points. Next thing we're going to do, is we're going to take this truck, which has an artillery piece, and we are going to send it. Now, since they're not in column, 6, 12, 18, and then 24. To there. And then here. I guess what we'll do is we'll take him and we'll go there. Okay, that's not in the fire zone. So it doesn't take a second activation. Alright, next chip is the German Direct Command. Uh, so we are going to spend, um, we have four. We are going to flip this guy, which will provoke an opportunity fire from the rear guards which they get the opportunity fire, so it'll happen on this side. So a red two, and they roll a seven. So they will flip over. All right, so we have three left. And then for giggles and laughs, we'll shoot this one. So yellow three. And we rolled a four. That's not going to do anything. Okay. So the last chit is the, well, the next chit is the Allied Direct Command. Um, so, yeah. Let's go with our paratroopers. These two, right? So we'll do... Uh, assault, so we'll start here with the 7, E Company. So bravery check. Dick Winters is up to the task. We rolled a 1. Um, opportunity fire. Uh, actually, this will drop out. This will technically go on top. Alright, so opportunity fire. Nope. We're to seven. Um, so we'll do a round of assault fire. Um, so red zero. Nope. Red zero. This is for the Germans. Nope. Red three for the Allies. Yes. Now the only modifiers that apply are terrain, which is minus one, and then the unit defense, which is a plus one. So it is a red 3, which is a suppression. We can pay a roll to convert this to a cohesion. Uh, which is... Uh, yes, I guess we'll do that. And this way we can probably stand a bit of a better chance. Okay. Uh, and then we have a red 4. No. 
All right, second round. Now I'm debating whether we charge them or not. I say they have two command points left. I say we charge them, make them burn a single command point. Now they only have one left. And uh, defensive fire from them, red zero, nope, red zero, nope. All right, so that is over. And then we come to this one, so bravery check. They pass. Uh, opportunity fire. Yeah, that's better. We can see a lot more now. Opportunity fire. Need a three or less. We don't get it. Uh, defensive fire. We'll do a round of assault combat first. Eight. And then the second one. One. Uh, we need that red zero. Unfortunately. Um, now the paratroopers red three. Red four. We got a zero that time. And that is a cohesion hit. So I will get a cohesion hit marker. And I will clip it very quickly. <clears throat> and then we will charge and force them to spend their last command point. And then red zero, red zero, yep. Okay, so then the final chip is the US 4th Division. So first we'll roll for command. So they get 1, plus their command rating of 3, so that'll put them up to 5. Okay, now, let me show you what's going on over here. So we need to get these guys off the beach into this hex where the rear guard is. Now this unit has line of sight into the hedgerow hex but not beyond it. So it can only fire into the hedgerow hex. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. This is this we have a mortar unit here that's seven hexes away with a range of six. So I want to move that up. Our problem is, in this hex, there's a mine marker and a tank. So let's see if we can move out of the minefield. We'll have to roll its troop quality. Ah, that's an automatic pass. So, this is a red movement point uh, unit, a tracked unit, and it's in column. So it's moving along the road. Um, so it's going to have plenty of movement points to get to here. Um, and since we're moving into an enemy fire zone, that has to be a second action. Now, next up, we're going to take this engineer unit and move it into the mine hex. So on its next turn, when it activates, it can clear the mine hex. You can't move in and clear on the same turn. <clears throat> this unit will also move in, and since it moves in, it has to stop. This unit can move up one. We'll do the same with the mortar because now the mortar will be in range there. Um, so as a second activation, we'll attack. Um, actually, uh, 
can we attack? No. Wait, 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 yes, this tank is attached to this division, so it can spot. Um, that is a rule that uh, I... Um, often kind of mess up, often forget. Um, so it is one that I like to uh, double check. Um, so spotter is in in command. I don't see anything about a, a division uh, a spotter for a mortar or organic artillery unit must be from the same formation as the mortar or organic artillery unit or independent in command of the formation's leader. Alright. The spotter is independent and it is in command of the formation leader. So we're gonna we're gonna roll uh, green three. We need a zero and we got a two. We can put a light barrage down. Okay. So that's all we'll do with those for right now. The minefield is kind of someone mucking things up. Alright. So that was turn one. Uh, let's pull the first chit of turn two. Allied Direct Command. Now this is exactly what we wanted to see. Uh, we have two command points and the Germans have none. So we're going to activate uh, Easy Company. Bravery check. We pass. Uh, opportunity fire. And they need a three or less. Nope. We'll do a round of assault fire. So red zero for the defenders. Nope. Nope. Uh, red 3 for the Americans, and we got a 2, which is a suppression test. Uh, we can't pay to pass. Uh, do we want to convert it? Uh, we'll try and com. well, we have to test, actually. I'm uh, and we pass, which is good. And then a red 4. All right, second round, we are going to charge. So uh, this is a key roll. So on a zero to three, they survive. On a four or higher, they are eliminated. All right, they are eliminated. So we take break court and we'll set this unit off to the side. All right, down here. Uh, bravery check fails. Okay, that is a failure, right? Yeah, we needed a seven because uh, it is minus one, minus two for defensive values, which is eight, and then one for the terrain, which is seven. So that assault fails. Um, we'll get another shot, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> Alright. 
So do we want to do anything with the fourth division? Um, uh, we can't do engineering actions on a direct command. Um, but we will shoot the mortar again. Uh, actually, no, we'll leave the mortar alone. Ah, what the hell, I want to roll the dice. We need a zero. No. Alright. Next chip. Ah, uh, that's good news for the Germans. Uh, so we'll roll to see how many command points they get. So the Allies' window may have closed there. Oh, well, there you go. So they're only going to get four command points. And, uh... We want to save them as much as we can, but we do want to shoot this unit here. Um, into the adjacent hex. No. And then we'll shoot this unit here. No. Alright, we'll leave these the guys there. <clears throat> Alright, next is the 4th Infantry Division. Alright, so first we'll roll for command. And we get a good amount of command points. We are going to get 7, which pushes us up to 10. Tertiary objective is to finish with above 5, so we can only burn 5 total command points. Alright. So first up, the engineers are going to clear these mines. And we'll go one and a half. And we'll take the column marker off. Uh, for two and a half, which I guess we forgot opportunity fire for this unit here, so we'll do it now. We don't get it. Um, so he is more or less where he needs to be. These guys will go one up around the corner, one, two, three. And then four. Take that off. Another opportunity fire. This time they get it. So red two is going to be a four. They have minus one for terrain. Uh, plus two for a column. Uh, so modified firepower is three, so they are just safe. Um, we'll move the mortar a little closer. We'll move this unit into here. He should be here with the mortar. Okay. Next up, German Direct Command. They only have two. Uh, well, at most, we're going to face one charge. So we're going to shoot at this unit. Nope. So that's it. All right. Final chip. Okay, sorry for the edit there. I didn't realize my battery was about to die. Anyway, I cheated just a little bit. Uh, I backed up and moved this stuff around. Basically, at the end of the tank's movement, I took it out of column. Uh, I rolled an opportunity fire. I didn't get it. Um, so I can move these units into here. Um, because uh, I didn't realize, or I forgot, 
that this direct command shit would be their last chance to move, and they need to get here to have a chance to win. So then I went back to the German direct command shit, and uh, I took a shot at this stack here, but I rolled a 9, um, so I didn't get it. So really, we just have this unit here, if this unit can take this hex somehow, and they're going to get a single reinforcement motor unit. They'll get a single chance. Uh, so, we're going to get uh, seven command points. We're going to drop the mortar fire on this hex here first. We would love to see a zero. We get a four. Oh, that's our company bonus roll. Alright, so we have a modified five. Okay. So five. And that's a four. Green four is a cohesion hit. Well, that's going to give us a chance if we can get another cohesion hit. We're going to roll four dice, basically. All right, first bravery. We pass. Opportunity fire. And they are down to a two. So no opportunity fire. So assault fire. So red zero. Red zero. Uh, red three for the Americans. That's a red two, which is going to be a suppression test. Uh, we'll roll it. We fail. So they are suppressed. A uh, red four. And we got a red zero, which is a cohesion hit which will kill this unit <clears throat> and will let the Americans advance and win the scenario. Um, the last play of the game. So how do you like that? Um, it took some minor cheating, if you want to call it that, in order to correct this error. Um, I missed a couple of opportunity fires from this one, I think, when I was initially moving the tanks down. I don't think they would have done any damage, but they might have been able to st uh, stop the tank. Um, but yeah, all in all, uh, a nice little introductory scenario. Get you back up to speed if you've been away from GTS for a little while. I am going to get started on setting up the next scenario, which is the invasion scenario. So wish me luck. We'll be playing that one together, uh, hopefully this weekend. So uh, thanks for watching. This is Mike with Playmore Games, and we'll see you in the next one.